Well, now I did it. I broke the laser cutter. That's okay. We're gonna fix it in this episode. What's going on everybody? Welcome to this episode of Home Build Workshop. I hope your day is going great. This is my X-Tool D1 Pro. It's a 20 watt diode laser. And this thing has been working great. I've been able to do lots of projects both on camera as well as off camera until the other day. I set the machine up to do a job and all it would do is run the head in, what is that, the X axis? It would not move the carriage in the Y axis. This machine has limit sensors on it which kind of tell it where it is. And depending on what software you're using, you can send it to the home position or any certain position in its usable space. I discovered that I could move the head in any position along this axis, but anytime I tried to move in this direction, it would set off the limit sensors saying that it was out of range. After doing a bit of investigation, I discovered I somehow broke the limit sensor. This little tiny control board right here is the Y-axis limit sensor. There's a little U-shaped bracket at the back, and also there's supposed to be one right here at the front. You can see that somehow I have broken off the bottom half of this sensor. I'm not sure of the technical name, but this is some sort of proximity sensor. There's a bracket at the back of the machine and also one at the front of the machine that passes into the center and when it does, the machine knows where it's at. With the front of this piece broken off, I'm guessing it's somehow telling the machine that it's out of limit because, well, the sensor's broken. Once I discovered this piece was broken, I all of a sudden got a little concerned and started thinking that I was gonna have to try to source this little piece and replace it on the board. But then I jumped on the X-Tool website and found that I could order up replacement sensors. I'm not sure if that means that this is a common problem, I don't know, but they're readily available. After waiting a few days for some shipping, I got my replacement sensors. It's time to fix this thing. This machine has three sensors. There's one for each end of the x-axis and then the one that I broke on the y-axis. You can only buy these as a set. You can't buy them individually. Thankfully, these are all marked x left, x right, and Y left and right. This is the one that we need to replace. These others for now are gonna go back in the bag and stashed away in a safe place in case I need them later. The process of removing these sensors is pretty straightforward. You just need to disconnect the electrical connector and then using an Allen wrench, you remove the two screws that hold the control board to the frame of the machine. These are spaced out away from the machine using a couple of plastic spacers. We're gonna set these aside for now. Now we'll just grab our replacement sensor and prepare for the reinstallation. Now technically, I could take this little sensor, reattach it to the frame, connect the electrical wires and be back up and running. But the more I look at this thing, the more I think that it's really kind of a poor design and I think it's something we can improve upon. These little sensors are just out in the open. There's nothing to protect them from an occasional bump with whatever and breaking them just like mine did. So I sat down in Fusion 360 and I 3D printed this little guy. This little shroud has the same dimensions as the spacers built right into the print. So now we won't need those little spacers. If we reinstall the sensor, you can see that having these little shrouds on the ends, hopefully will protect these fragile components from getting broken in the future. Now we can't completely close this off because those little bars need to be able to pass unobstructed inside of this sensor. But I think this will be quite an improvement over having nothing at all. Let's reinstall it. Reinstalling the new control board with my 3D printed shroud is as easy as using the original screws and just reattaching it to the machine. You don't need to use the plastic spacer bushings because as I said, the 3D print has that bushing built right into it. With the new board in place, we'll just reconnect the electrical connection and we're done. 
these little spacers, since I don't need them now, I'm just going to set them aside with the rest of my spare parts for this machine. Here at the back of the machine, hopefully you can see that, is the little bracket that goes in between this proximity sensor. If I slide this all the way back, it's still able to move unobstructed into the new sensor. And if we slide it all the way forward, you can still see that it is unobstructed. The little bar is able to pass into the proximity sensor, no problems, but the sensor itself is protected a lot more than it was. So now we're ready to fire this up and see if it does what it's supposed to do. Now I don't have a specific job loaded or anything. I'm gonna leave the laser head much higher than it needs to be, but I'm just gonna see if it'll load the previous job and work correctly. Now before, when I would start this, like I said, this would move in this direction, but it would not move forward without setting off the out of bounds alarm. So let's see what happens. If it moves forward, I'm gonna consider it fixed. If it sets off the alarm, well, maybe we got some more troubleshooting to do. Here we go. Well, that's a good sign. I'm going to test it one more time. I'm going to cycle the power. Then we'll move this to a different position and just try it one more time before calling it good. Well, thankfully, that was a pretty easy fix. Now I can put this thing back to work with what I was trying to do a week ago. Hopefully having this new bracket will help protect that sensor and make it last a little bit longer and hopefully avoid breakage in the future. If any of you have a machine like this and you want to add this bracket to yours, I'm going to make this STL file available on my website. I'm going to put a link down below in the video description. This link will include the Y-axis shield that I just replaced, but I've also made files for both ends of the X-axis shields. You can just download it, print it out, and add it to your machine. The print takes about 25 minutes. I did spend a fair bit of time prototyping this, probably four or five different prints before I got it right, but now it's working. It's available if you guys wanna add it to your Xtool D1 Pro. I'm not 100% sure if this will work on every single model. I believe that the Pro version is the only one with these sensors. I could be wrong, correct me down in the comments. Download in the links. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you next time.